Hello, fellow parents and educators. Thank you for joining me at Education Evolution, where we are disrupting the status quo in today's learning models. We talk about present day education, what's broken, who's fixing it, and how. I'm Dr. Maureen O'Shaughnessy, your host and founder of Education Evolution and the Microschool Coalition, where we are fiercely committed to changing the narrative, to reimagining the education landscape, and creating learning that serves all children and prepares them to thrive. If you are new, welcome to the podcast. Please subscribe on our website to get it delivered to your inbox weekly. If you've been around a while, have you left a review? Hello, Education Evolution listeners. I have been thinking a lot about love and belonging these past months with so much upheaval and way too much hate and division in our world. This has led me to think about the work of Abraham Maslow. I love his pyramid metaphor to explain how we go from surviving to being fully self-actualized and living our highest and best lives. He was a psychologist that did a lot of his work in the 1940s. So I've been pondering how we become a world of greater love and empathy. I wonder what I can be doing as an educational activist and what schools can do as a major influence in the life of our children. Turning to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I looked at this framework and how we can support the journey to help each student lead their best life. So let's look at the five tiers on his pyramid. Foundational needs are placed at the base. The bottom level holds our physiological needs. We need air, food, shelter, sleep, etc. to exist. The level above that addresses the need for safety. We need personal safety, health, and resources to feel secure. After these bottom two tiers of basic physiological needs, we come to the third level, which is love and belonging. This sense of connection, friendships, and intimacy, and being part of a family or community is vital. With these foundational needs met, humans can go on to the next level, which is esteem, and the final level of self-actualization and striving to become the best humans possible. Maslow suggested that our needs must be met from the ground up to live our best lives. So I wanted to think at the levels of safety and love and belonging, because these seem to be ones that our schools have an important role in. How do schools support these foundational levels of human needs? I know in schools, we can't do a lot for the physiological needs of each child, but we do provide food. But the levels of safety and love and belonging are where schools can do amazing work. We would like to think that every child feels safe at school. If each school were to do an annual culture study and invite anonymous feedback from each student, with kindergarten children circling the smiley face or sad face in response, and older students completing a survey, we would understand how children perceive their level of safety at school. Sometimes we get caught up in dispensing knowledge and information and forget to make sure our children feel safe. Many kids cruise through their school days with no sense of danger, but some kids feel bullied or threatened on a regular basis. A student with learning differences who visited my school recently was a very sad example of this. He explained how he had been pushed downstairs and broken his ankle last year in his school. Oh my gosh, that's horrific. And that is not schools as a safe place. Bullying is so challenging for us to catch and address as educators. It's often subtle yet pervasive. And it leads to that feeling of not being safe. 
going up a level from safety, what about love and belonging? I think that that ties directly into safety. If I feel like I'm loved and valued and I have a place in my school or community, I'm more likely to help others feel loved and valued and not be bullying. But if I feel threatened or invisible, it would be easier for me to just threaten or dehumanize others. So love and belonging feel integrated with safety. My challenge to schools, and my own will be taking the same challenge this month, is to complete a culture survey and ask tough questions about students feeling seen, heard, and valued. Do they feel safe? Do they feel like they belong? This next question is common in the advanced ed accreditations that I have served on. Does each child feel like at least one adult knows them and cares? Wow, that's a big one. And that's something that is monitored in the accreditation process. Does each child feel like they have friends and are welcome? Then I'd add in a couple of open-ended questions, like what makes the school feel welcoming and inclusive? And what could we do to make our school feel more welcoming and inclusive? Just asking these questions shows we care. And then if we use that information to guide our steps, we could be making a big difference in terms of safety and love and belonging. Our country has been feeling a stronger sense of division than ever. The resulting increase in hate crimes and serial murders are not a surprise. So we each need to be a strong and loud voice for love and inclusion. We need to make sure every child belongs. What are a few simple steps we can take in our schools and homes? I think a huge step for educators and parents would be to find time to listen without distraction or screens to our children. It means initiating conversations as well as making ourselves available when our kids need to talk. As a mom, when my girls were teens and distancing from my wonderful adult influence, time when other activities were going on, especially when I was driving them somewhere, seemed to be easier time for my girls to express deep and uncomfortable emotions. Giving our precious children undistracted, screen-free time to listen deeply and with empathy would make a world of difference. This is an expression of love. And we know from our young children who imitate our expressions and mannerisms that they're watching us and modeling their behavior in ours. If you doubt this, think back. I'm sure you have an example of an uncomfortable time Perhaps when your own road rage was being modeled by your elementary or middle school child? I know I'm guilty. I remember that happening when I was in the Philippine, and lanes painted on the highways seemed like they were stripes of decoration. Drivers floated all over the road, and until I got used to it, it made me crazy. And I heard that frustration echoed in my sixth grade daughter's comment of, Pick a lane, jerk. Oops, wonder where she got that from. Hopefully, she's picked up on some of my more positive aspects and modeling as well. So listening is one. Beyond listening, we need to continue to train ourselves in empathy. In an upcoming episode, my friend Scotty, who helps schools like mine, establish no place for hate schools. She gives great suggestions on how we can interrupt our own words and make sure that we're using empathy and becoming aware of our biases with the hope of becoming anti-bias. This is a part of the top of Maslow's hierarchy where we want to be respected and esteemed and also respect others and hold them in esteem. An important step before we get to the top of the pyramid and work on being our very best. Listening and growing our empathy are steps that we can take in every relationship. As a hate crime and murder hit close to home last July, I realized that if our schools are not places where children feel valued and are thriving, that our schools are actually places that are damaging children and creating a sense of dehumanization that makes harming and hating others possible. 
As the common denominator and largest influence outside of the home, schools could actually be implicit in hate growing in our young today. Ouch! That is such a harsh and painful realization. I care for my students and don't want to feel the burden of hate put on the doorsteps of our schools. But if a child feels invisible or stupid in our schools, we've dehumanized that child. If our system is driven by staying on track with the curriculum, then completing the content of a course is of higher value than meeting the child where they are. Our broken system of education is guilty of placing covering content over creating love and belonging for each child. Painful indeed. I know some educators may say, this is not our responsibility. Love and belonging is not on my job description. But we used to say that about transporting kids to school, and kids would walk miles to get to school. We used to say that about feeding our children, but now we have breakfast available at school as well as free and reduced meals. We used to say that schools weren't responsible for before and after care. Now we have before and after care at many schools. So this love and belonging is another need that we can and will address. It stretches us beyond being dispensers of knowledge and content, but we've been stretched before and we have met the challenge. We can make sure that every child feels love and welcomed and that this is a priority. So my challenge for educators is to look at our present outdated system that does not really allow us to put aside curriculum when there is a human need that seems more important. So we are all going to have to demand that we get to work in humane systems where we can put the often rote and quickly forgotten learning on the back burner when there are more important lessons and teachable moments that arise. Until we are all demanding to work in a place where our professionalism allows us to make these determinations and put humanity over course content, we won't get this needed change of love and belonging in our schools. Teachers, this means changing policies and our outdated institution. It won't be easy. The first step is to take our blinders off that allow us to think that we're all doing good in our schools. We know better. We see the climb of mental health issues and suicide attempts. We see the unacceptable dropout rates. So we are not doing good for all our children. Let the blinders come off. Feel that discomfort. Ugh, it haunts me. But let it become that grain of sand that irritates the oyster. Help our institutions make caring and empathy more than a theme of the month or a special lesson in an advisory class. Let this irritant become a pearl. Let's make it a grassroots effort to put kids before content. Last week in Education Evolution, you heard Lauren Demarudis of Big Picture Learning talking about interest-driven learning. When we value our kids and trust their passions are important and a way into learning, we have a wonderful tool for making learning meaningful and helping students feel seen and valued. So think about it. What can you do in your classroom to become more interest-driven? How can you listen to a student and adapt an assignment or maybe even throw it out and let a passion project replace it? We have to take the discomfort of knowing that we are a part of the hate problem in the world and do something with it. Lauren's ideas could be your next step. Educators, what subject area could possibly be more important than creating safety, love, and belonging in our schools? Let's do those culture surveys and start listening to our precious learners. We can build the empathy and create the interest-driven learning that helps all of our rainbow of learners feel seen, heard, valued, and get to thrive. Abraham Maslow had it right. We all need to feel safe and to feel love and belonging. We need this in our schools. Non-negotiable. 
And then hopefully our students will go out and create this safety and loving belonging in our world. Teachers, are you up for this challenge? Please say yes. I know how challenging it is to make changes inside your own school or community. I've spent years working with schools around the world on creating learner-centered programs, and it always struck me how much schools were able to get done with the right tools and guidance. If you're ready to make changes like this in your own school, let's talk and put together an action plan. Visit educationevolution.org backslash consult for a free 15-minute call, and let's see if we're a good fit for more work together. Education Evolution listeners, you are the ones to ensure we create classrooms where each student is seen, heard, valued, and thriving. We need you. Let's go out and reach every student today. I'd be so grateful if you'd head over to your podcast app to give a great rating and review if you found this episode valuable. Don't wait. Please do it right now before you forget. I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Signing off, I am Maureen O'Shaughnessy, your partner in boldly reimagining education.